that even that which applies in the world of science is just a dimension of the wisdom of God that they have borrowed and manipulated to appear as if it is their own invention. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember the beginning of every knowledge, the beginning of every wisdom is only by the Spirit of God. Therefore, there is nothing that has ever come to be. There is nothing that can ever manifest except upon the foundation of that which God is. The minds of men are a product of the wisdom of God. The reason why a man is wise is because there is a spirit of wisdom. Whether the man is a believer or whether the man is not a believer, even from the very fact that the creation happened by the God of heaven, that is reason enough that every other thing that a man will ever, will ever accomplish in his lifetime is a product of what the creator created in him together with creating him. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, this day, the Spirit wants us to understand that unless the presence of God is present, everything that represents, everything that God represents can never find expression. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the things that the presence of God is, is not just the, that it is something that is physical that you can see, but the presence of God is a kind of an atmosphere that has the ability to change the, to change, um, the possibilities of a certain place or of a certain reality. There are places whereby you can walk into and when you check on how the environment is, you may doubt whether worship can go on here. Wait until the presence of God begins to invade that territory. Everything must align itself to the systems of heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore the first introduction and the first step to the manifestations of the spirit is that the spirit will first of all bring that atmosphere of the father to that place. So that the enemy can never claim to, claim to have any environment or any atmosphere within that vicinity. The fact that the presence of God has already taken place is a legality that nothing else should ever happen there if it is not of God. The reason why Satan, uh, uh, when, when, when he enters into a sanctuary like this one, the reason why he begins to get uncomfortable, he begins to feel there is fire, he cannot stay in such a place as this, is not just because people are praying. It is the reason is because there is a governing atmosphere. And that governing atmosphere, it is the reason why the Bible says that where two or three people are gathered in my name. The, 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 the reason why God has to release his presence among men is because it is within the desire of God. The craving of God is that he may manifest among or in the midst of men. Therefore, one, um, the first uh, dimension to the manifestation of that which God represents and that which God is. If God is a healer, then healing must first of all be ushered by that atmosphere. Praise the name of the Lord. Therefore, I want us just to realize that when we talk about the presence, it doesn't just mean that it just comes naturally and just from anywhere. There are certain, especially for the time of intercession that we have had here, we may not realize this, but every time we are able to interact with God effectively, one of the things that the Lord must make sure is that you must carry something that is of him. Praise the name of the Lord. When a man ascends Mount Zion, when a man ascends, the Bible says we have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. The reason why Zion is the city of... Sorry. The reason why... <clears throat> The reason why Zion is the city of the living God is because 
there is a difference between Zion City and the city of Westlands. The difference is what exactly is resident within the environment in Zion. Praise the name of the Lord. There is something that operates in Zion that doesn't operate in every other city. That is why the Bible says that as you come to Mount Zion, you have come to the city of the living God, the place of the innumerable company of angels, the place, um, the place uh, you have come um, to the, um, the place of the innumerable company of angels, and you have come to Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, and you have come to the blood of Jesus that speak better things than the blood of Abel. Praise the name of the Lord. Angels don't just operate in every atmosphere. There must be a governing atmosphere that supports their manifestation and their prevalence over a certain territory. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, I want us to realize that the Bible says that the Spirit of God is alive and that work within us. As we begin to pray, there are certain things that the spirit is beginning to make alive from within us. There are certain things that we may not even see them. We may not actually feel when they are coming alive. But there are certain realities that the spirit that is alive and that work within us is making uh, available from within us. Praise the name of the Lord. The presence of the spirit from within our lives is not just it's not just it's not just a condition for humanity the presence of the holy spirit within us as a spirit that is alive and at work remember he is at work praise the name of the lord and therefore by the very fact that the spirit is alive and by the very fact that is that is at work every man that is at work he is at work up to something he is up to something i a man can never work unless he wants to achieve something. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and therefore, even as the spirit is alive and at work, he is at work because there are things that have to be achieved. If at all, my being a man will, will make God to be glorified. He is alive and he is working that I may that I, may, that I may translate into a certain reality within God. That when I step into a certain place, uh, men may see a man. But out of the man, there is another reality that the spirit has created. Therefore, one of the things that the spirit is alive and at work to achieve in the life of a man is the presence of God. Bona sifiwe. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter number 10, verse number 38. Acts, chapter number 10, verse number 38. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Praise the name of the Lord. There is something I want us to realize. The anointing Jesus at this time was the son of God in the dimension of a man. He was in other words the son of a man. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible says that while a man is a man, there is something that must happen to every man. If at all these things that Jesus did have to happen through a man. That the Bible says that God had to anoint his very son, Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, number one, and then with power. And then as a result, he went about doing number one good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Then it gives us something that we should never omit. That for God was with him. Men never saw 
the physicality of a superior God walking with Jesus. But there was an atmosphere that was walking together with Jesus. Somebody say the presence. When God is with a man, men may not see that God is with you. Until results prove to men that indeed this man is not alone. Praise the name of the Lord. We have heard our pastor give testimonies about uh, the evidences of the power of God. He has seen the power of God over his life and ministry in various places. The, the, the very fact that he has seen results that are beyond his ability to produce is a reality that there is something that works with him. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, there is a relationship between that which the anointing gave Jesus while as a man and the fact that uh, there was uh, an accreditation and a, and, a, and a fact that as a result of that anointing, now God was with him. Because when the anointing of the Spirit comes upon you, one of the things that the Spirit commands into and through a man is the presence. Therefore, the presence of God is a reality that men may never see. Until results, the presence of God is not tested by, by, by physicality. There, there are men that may never look like it, only that the investment of the presence is already at work within their lives. Until one day that the Bible says that they shall, you shall enter the valley of Baca, and you shall turn it into a valley of springs. Who is the man in the face of the earth that has an ability to enter a territory and turn it into a valley of springs? A valley that was paraded with sorrow. Men were under infirmities. But then the Bible says that a man can enter a city and then the man will turn it into a valley of rejoicing. That we can enter somewhere where men are weeping. And by the very fact that you enter there, praise the name of the Lord. The weeping has already come to an end. When Jesus visited uh, Lazarus uh, and, and his sister Mary, and I think was it, was, it, was it mother, and he met them weeping. It, the statement that Jesus made was not just by the authority that he was the very son of God. Remember, every single thing that was happening to Jesus was not happening to him because he is the son of God, because he is the Messiah. Every manifestation that was happening to Jesus was the very naturality of a man under transformation. That is why he said actually in John 14 that if you believe in me and my very work's sake, these things you have seen me do, these are just, I was setting an example, but greater things shall you do. Because when Jesus entered into the tomb of Lazarus and he met people that were weeping, he said, he said, when he met them that they were weeping, he said, Lazarus, this man is not dead. This man is only asleep. Can I tell us one thing? The presence of God has an ability to give you boldness over very impossible situations. There are deadly things in our generation that unless there is the garment of the presence, you can never contend against them. Praise the name of the Lord. But then we learn that the very reality that all these manifestations were coming from, uh, from Jesus, that at that time he came in the form. That is why Jesus never began performing miracles from age 1 to age 30. We see him just like like Chris, like Juma, like Ben, like every man, like, ev like every man. Praise the name of the Lord. If, if everything that he was doing was under the jurisdiction of him being God in the Son, 
then miracles could have begun to happen even before even before the age of that years but the bible says that even at age 12 that jesus stayed in the temple because the man wanted to learn he is god in the sun but this time even god in the sun has become man praise the name of the lord the bible says he forsook the glory of being god and he came as a man praise the name of the lord he never just came so that he didn't just come so that uh, so that um, he can come with some sorry some hidden authority as god he came in the fullness of man. Money, in, the, in the fullness of man in the face of the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why men could despise him just like a normal man. And there is nothing that he could do to them. He had the ability to invoke authority from his father. And say, can be, the, this man something can come upon them. And they will never insult me again. He had that, that capacity. But then to illustrate unto us how a man needs to operate. He forsook every glory of being God in the sun. And then how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit number one. Even power itself must be as a product of the anointing of the Spirit. Every power that is not a manifestation of the anointing of the Spirit in your life, that power is a strange power. Praise the name of the Lord. Therefore, the presence is a manifestation of when the Holy Spirit becomes attached to the life of a man. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to realize we have, by the grace of God and by the Spirit, in the Youth of Bliss Conference, we have been talking about the reality that is called the kingdom of God. And I want us to realize this morning that the very reality of the kingdom of God, that is only but a reality. But for realities that manifest the, 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 the actual representation of God must first of all uh, be, pre be, preceded, be preceded by an atmosphere. Praise the name of the Lord. Therefore, the manifestation of the kingdom of God will need an atmosphere. The governing atmosphere that precedes the manifestation of the kingdom of God is the presence. Without the presence, a man will, 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 will joke around, just to around and try everything that his ability can accord that, 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 that particular place, but to no avail. Because it is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. The first thing that the spirit is working to achieve in your life is the presence. No man can enter the throne of God physically and tap into that presence and come alive with it in the face of the earth. It will take the very spirit whom the Bible says we have been given as an access to the manifestation of that presence. Therefore, as we pray, the Spirit of God come, comes alive within us and begins to manifest that which the Father represents. Remember, the Holy Spirit is not just any other spirit. The Holy Spirit is God himself in expression. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is not just any other spirit trying to bring about something. 
The Holy Spirit is the very God, the very God we are praying to. But this time, the office of the Spirit is for the expression of whatever that God is, especially as pertains the life of man. Praise the name of the Lord. When the Lord realized that it is not easy for a man to tap into his presence in that throne, because the Bible says that he dwells in an approachable light. Therefore, in, within the, the wisdom of God, he has to devise a strategy upon which man can be able to experience those realities and still remain as a man. For no man sees me and continues to live. If there is no man that can enter into that presence and see the Father and receive of him and continue to live, then I, within the wisdom of God, he knew that I must bring about another office. Is any more the Lord that by the authority of that office I can make my realities manifest in and through a man? It's called the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, the very Spirit, the very Holy Spirit, is not any other spirit, it is the Spirit of God, the, ve the very God that we pray to. Is the one Jesus said, I know him because I come out of him. Praise the name of the Lord. In other words, I'm an eruption of the very God you're talking about. And that is why I know him. And that is the very place of the Spirit. That the Spirit of God is a very manifestation of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, when, when the Lord desired to help men, and when the Lord desired to manifest his ability, he thought within himself, what can I do and how can I do it? That I may help men experience me. Me that I'm good. Have you ever realized that we have never known the meaning of good until God declares that this is good? Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says these are the doings of the Lord. And it is this, this, uh, this, this, uh, these are the workings of God and they are marvelous in our eyes. Praise the name of the Lord. And so unless God has defined himself, sometimes we may have the wrong definition about God. Praise the name of the Lord. We can only say something is marvelous when the Lord manifests it. And then it so happens that the only name we can brand this day, it is marvelous. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Therefore, when the Lord thought by himself, how can I help men experience my marvelous dimensions? He said, I will give them the helper. That is why Jesus said, it is right that I depart, that the helper may come. It was not just a title that the Holy Spirit just carried by himself. No, it is, it is, a, it is, it is God's strategy to help men. That is why this time he came as the helper. That is why the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the very help of God upon men. And that will give them the helper. Praise the name of the Lord. So when the Lord wants to help a man, he will release to the man the Holy Spirit. And I thank the Lord because that is why I believe during the last day of the youth that bless. Uh, our pastor just led us into a prayer that everybody needs to receive the Holy Spirit. Because there is no man that can excel by himself. There is no man that can succeed by himself. You will need help. A man is weak by his own structure. The humanity of a man is vanity by itself. It will take the help that surpasses the ability of man 
in order to excel as as you see god has designed your excellence god has designed your success but by you yourself you cannot excel to that design that he has called you to excel so he will give you himself this time as a helper praise the name of the lord second corinthians chapter number 4 verse number 14 to 15 the bible says knowing that he who raised the lord jesus will raise us also with jesus and bring us into his presence praise the name of the lord the manifestation of victory over death when jesus as the son of man died the the, the very a strategy by which that victory came upon that grave and he conquered death and the grave and he conquered satan praise the name of the lord every man as long as a man is a man will need help and so jesus when he died as a man he needed help and the very help that jesus needed was god himself but this time, the manifestation of that help, because he is a man, he will need the helper. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the Holy Spirit, as God himself, but this time, as the helper. And the helper is within the jurisdiction of the office and authority of the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit came. And by his power, because the Holy Spirit must be the beginning beginning of power must be the beginning of authority must be the beginning of excellence there is nothing else that comes from god that does not begin from the place of his help upon men everything that a man will ever be must proceed from the very reality of the holy spirit beloved i wish above all things that john chapter number one verse i think number five i wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prospers praise the name of the lord even prosperity as long as the prosperity is coming to a man it will take the help of the spirit it is the spirit that is able to give you good health. That is why he is the very spirit of power. But he's also the very spirit of healing. He is the very spirit that manifests deliverance. He is the very spirit that manifests fire. As in the day of Pentecost. These, all these dimensions are within the custodies of God himself. But then the office that God has, can I say, dissected himself is the office of the spirit that he may help himself be a helper to men it is not easy to help a man the bible already says in jeremiah chapter number 17 that the heart of a man is desperately wicked above all things and then the most high says who can understand it so helping a man who has a very wicked heart desperately sick in other versions helping a, a heart that is sick it will take it is not easy god will have to design himself this time he may not come as a king but this time he can come as a helper i'm coming to help you praise the name of the lord and therefore, I just want us to realize by the Spirit that for us to have an experience that will birth wonders in our generation, that will birth impact in our time, 
I thank the Lord because this year our theme is agreeing with the Spirit. Because everything proceeds from that place. Even mercy itself comes only by the manifestation of the Spirit. When the Lord wants to show you mercy, he will release the Spirit of mercy. It is himself. But this time, he is helping you obtain mercy. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we just rise on our feet and just tell the Holy Spirit, I need you more. I need you more. Help me. Help me to have an experience. An encounter with you. Can you just cry to the Holy Spirit? And just tell him, it is true that I desire your presence. It is true that I desire to have an experience of your presence. But just help me. I am a man. I cannot help myself. In the name of Jesus. Who am I without your presence? Holy Spirit help me. Help me. Help me that my days will be days of your presence. Help me. Help me. In the name of Jesus. You have desired to help us by the mystery of the helper. I pray that you shall help us, O Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. May we walk by the reality of your presence. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we appreciate God as our pastor? Hallelujah. Can we appreciate Evangelist Chris for that great word? Amen. Hallelujah. He's, he's really taught so well about the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit. There's nothing a man can be without the help of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God is the presence of God himself. And so we have come to, to the end of uh, the youth service and the reason I'm here is because now I'm going to be leading in prayer as we get ready for the next service. Amen? So, um, but I want us to, just right now first we're going to just worship God in uh, let me just ask a few people to come and help me. A few members of the worship team. I want us to sing one or two worship songs as we welcome the presence of God in this place and then we're going to get into prayer. Amen. Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna Popote Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna Popote Kweli Hakuna Mwenye Shara kubwa Kama wewe Mungu Hakuna Wenye ishara Yeah. 
Your presence. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about you is great. Do not say about your presence. Let's go. What a mighty God who is saved. 
just raise your hands. Come on, begin to pray, begin to pray. Let the atmosphere shift. Let the atmosphere shift. Let the Holy Spirit take over. Welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. Welcome the power of the Holy Spirit. Welcome His glory in this place. Welcome His power in this place. Makata riba zakata rumo zakata mashanda libra haseteke zakato riba hatala ba 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 ba. Take over Holy Spirit. Take over Holy Spirit. Take over Holy Spirit. Makata riba hasala ba ba ye. Makata rumo zika ma ma ma. Ya kazanda riba kata zakata riba zakata. Ya kazanda riba ya darabaka zakato riba zakata ra ba ba. Ya kazakata ma hasala. Kata robo zikiri arabaka santeri lebe kuri baba 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 shiba hatari arabaka rika bata arabaka zokoti kara baba 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 santori baya tiri tiri zakatori baya ndara baba baba zakatori baya raba baba baba ya kazoka tala bahasi baba 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 makoto robo zikiri arabaka santori baya kata zakata robo zikiri arabaka fill this place with your glory fill this Bless with your presence. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We need your help, Holy Spirit. We need your help, Holy Spirit. We need your help, Holy Spirit. Fill this place, O God. Make Katare Mosiiri Arabaka. Saturate this such service with your power, my God. Saturate this service with your power, my God. Ya kasi gari Arabaka. Santori ba ya Katare ba ba e. Ma kosi ta ya ba 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 ba. Santari ba zakata. Ma kosi giri andara. Again, the Lord is good in my soul. He is doing a new thing. I'm so happy, excited for the youth service. I know God is taking us to better heights. Praise the living God. So we will continue in the place of prayer. We are trusting God. I first want us to go into thanksgiving. Praise Jesus. To shukuru mungu kwa sisi na wale wengine wote wanakuja kwa taifa kwa familia zetu. We thank God for the week that is just concluding. Praise the living God. Let us first go into a place of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord Jehovah God, mighty one of Israel. We give you worship. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we adore you, Father. We come into the place of giving you praise unto a place of honoring who you are king of glory your word has said unto us that you neither sleep nor do you slumber thou redeemer of israel you're watching over us day and night O king of glory and because you watched over us through the week we have come here to gather again in your presence oh father in the place where we come to remind you that father that we love you jehovah god that you are our father that you are our maker you have our being in your hands you have preserved our lives and we have the confidence to you that doesn't fail to you that is faithful to the end to you that has never lied to a man we can put our hope we can put our trust in your unfaithful failing love. We thank you for the grace. We thank you for the strength. We thank you for the peace. We thank you for helping us to travel in the place of adversity. Thou has been with us O Ramashanda. Maraka zeko to siya rabolesha rika zenda rabakanta maribo zeya. O Ramashanda rabokesi malabasaida. O shikiriya namazai. O yes my father. We 
when we were about to fall, you looked at the cross of Jesus and you brought us redemption. You have sanctified us. You have cleansed us, O God. You have separated us from the power of sin and death. And we have a new hope. We have an eternal hope. We have a confidence that is above humanity. That is above the issues that we go through in this life. We're not going to give up because he that haunts us, he is mighty and he is strong. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Your name is so great. It has given us the victory. Your holy name has won battles for, uh, for us. Your holy name has defended us. Your holy name has given us divine protection. Oh, thank you for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for holding us under the shadow of your wings where our enemies could do us no harm. We thank you for this service. We thank you for our souls. We thank you for our spirits. We thank you for our bodies, the flesh, that together, my Father, you may build us, my Redeemer, by the power of your Holy Spirit and in the most holy faith. Oh, send Rita <laughs> Even the coming generations will call me by this name, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. And therefore, this hour, I come to you by your holy name. O oh, thou God of Abraham, O oh, thou God of Isaac, O oh, thou God of Jacob, we come before you, acknowledging you by your holy name. O Ribo Sendererehanda, Uriata Sekata. That you may move in the midst of our generations, that you may move in the midst of our homes. Oh, Shandara Rabokosa, Garabasuta Rababon, Reseka and Torobo Shanda. In the great and mighty name of Jesus, we give you thanks, oh God. We join the assembly of angels, the multitude upon multitude of angels. We come to the new city. We come to the city of the living God, the new Jerusalem, because we receive the redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now we can approach the throne of mercy with confidence, the throne of grace with confidence, that we may obtain mercy for a time like this, that we may arise, O oh God, and come into the place of your glory and to Mount Zion and to the new Jerusalem, the city of the living God and to the multitude of angels and the spirits of men I just men made perfect oh yes oh yes and to the church of Jesus Christ where Christ you're the firstborn we come to that place we come to that place we come to that glory we come to the presence of Shandara Boshe where we are fed from the abundance of your house where we drink from the rivers of your delight where we come to the river of life that flows from the throne of God and of the Lord and every death situation cannot be anymore the Bible says wherever the waters or the river went or in the dead sea horrible or everything received life every dead sea in our place let it receive life today as we come to that place where we have the waters of life flowing through the river of life that is flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. 
we drink of those waters we drink them into our bodies we drink them into our finances we drink them into our families so oh god bring redemption in our nation bring redemption in the parliament bring redemption in the churches bring redemption in the villages bring redemption in the estates of father by the streets and the roadsides by the highway so in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. We are still in the mood of prayer. And we will just give honor to our God. Praise Jesus. I believe we are here because we've received the grace of salvation. Praise Jesus. And uh, <clears throat> Paul told the Corinthians that God can be dependable. Praise the living God. So sometimes there are many things we have tried. Sometimes even our own parents have failed us, isn't it? Or those people we sometimes think or they're the people we can run to not because they did not want at times because they are in short of what we want from them praise the living God but there is one that never lacks and there is one that is never in short praise the living God so I want us to pray with confidence Kamakomba, that's something the Holy Spirit was reminding me in the morning anytime you come before me come with, before me with confidence Praise the living God. Toa yote, toa wale wote umekuwa ukiaminia. Just allow me to have my place. Praise the living God. So I want to pray. I, I, I feel a drive to pray for all the children that are on holiday time. Praise the living God. I want us to commit all the students, the pupils before the living God. And we pray that there will be a shift in the spirit. That the Lord is going to do something in the youth of our nation praise the living god and something new whatever i was somewhere yesterday and i got a very big burden and wherever we went what i observed i, I was so sanded even i see you can melala praise god and i realized so many people have gone back to their traditional worships praise the lord you go to a whole village and almost the whole village is doing the traditional kind of God allowed me to see it. Praise God. So I felt, in fact I came saying, you mean we have not prayed. The devil cannot be moving at that speed. Praise the living God. So I want us to secure because what was happening there, it's, it's like a recruitment for the young men. Praise the living God. So it really touched me. We need to pray, church. What I saw yesterday, and those are very learned people, it's not something I would have expected from them. So we need to pray for the generation. The enemy is out to, to, to steal it and take it away and remove them from the church of Jesus Christ. I remember some of those young men were like, they, they were being forced. We were with the Rafa, so you saw being forced, we were, we, I was with my kids. So please let's pray to Rudisha generation. Praise God. So please let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you because you are the Lord Almighty. Thank you because one thing we have assurance of, there is no other sacrifice greater than the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. There is no other covenant greater than the covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord to God Almighty, I thank you because you are true and you are holy. You are righteous and you are loving. And because you love 
loved mankind you sent your son Jesus Christ into the world or river shudder that he may come and save humankind and we know that the enemy is a liar we know that he is the thief who comes through the window but Jesus our Lord thou has been made manifest that you may destroy all the works of the evil one father I want to thank you for what you have allowed us to understand and even to know and even reveal what is happening in the dark places father in the name of Jesus we lift our sons before you we repent our sins all about shadow all about what wherever my father we could be accused of or this generation the devil will not take her away the devil will not manifest himself oh my father you are a god that answers by fire oh mighty one of israel thou hast said unto me that it will be a quick witness unto the witches and to the wizards and to the rumor mockers of father now come and be a quick witness against those traditional worship oh rabba kesselebushad oh yes they say that the media is teaching them that they should go back to their tradition lord god whatever media house you need to close close it now jehovah god close it or in the test that to the enemies you see close it to my father oh let you be glorified let you be worshipped oh god and because you've given us authority we declare them closed down we declare them my father if they will not come to the place and to lift up for my father a new generation that is full of the fire oh rabbi said telelele bong zakala hande bolesha oh rabbi so horrible to nakuliria to nakuliria for the spirit of revival through the university soccer through the high school soccer imams Oh my Father, oh Holy Spirit of God, hear us today, we are crying out to you, forgive us as the fathers, forgive us as the parents of Father where we have gone astray where we have left the place of praise oh where we have compromised we repent we repent oh my father my god we cry out to you do a new thing oh father oh you have said in the book of isaiah three and first two that you are ready for battle and you announce the battle cry of God and you are ready for war and you call the nations into the place of battle Lord stir yourself up for battle let your anger increase in battle let you be clothed with the work of, with warfare oh God come and fight against your enemies the enemies of your people Ramon oh my god you answered elijah may you answer us today because we are lifting our spirit and our faith before you we believe and we trust that our generation marabose kelelele orabashandalabose will be saved in your presence 
Father, we give you glory, we give you worship, and we honor your holy name. Thank you very much. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are in control. We pray for protection. We pray that you may cover us in the blood of Jesus, that we may live to see the victory, Father, and even to bring honor to you and sacrifices of thanksgiving as you deliver our nation, as you deliver our generation, as you deliver these children, oh, Father. Oh, Shandarabo Koze Kete, Rusandarabo Shekori Maze, oh, Rabba Kandarabo Suyarabo Lesha, Jose we are asking for wisdom in the spirit of God. We are asking for wisdom of prayer for this generation. Oh, Maraba Santo Robolesha, Rwanda Sekeleba Suarabolesha, Riatarabo Sekoruba Suarabolesha, Rwanda Rabo Sekala Hanababosua, Rita Kase Malasha, Tuta Kazarabanama Sekorobosia, Riatarabo Sukala Han. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Father, those who do not know what they are doing, we pray that you may open up their spiritual eyes. Oh, hallelujah, my Father. We are praying to you, my Father, that you may bring the harvest as a king of glory, that you may gather them from the north and the east, oh God, from the west and from the south. Gather them by your spirit, oh Father. You that gathered, my Father, those of Tyre to bring their merchandise to Judah. I pray now that you may gather, my Father, that you may gather from the four corners of the nations, or about cancer. Gather now, Father, those who gonna go for the harvest. Gather them in their homes. Gather them from their sick beds. Gather them, oh Father, from the place of their adversity. Gather them with strength. Gather them as you gathered Gideon. Gather them as you gathered David from the sheepfold or Rabba Honda. Gather your people now. Gather them from the palaces. Gather them, my Father. Oh, with your mighty hand and a stretch of our rubber hand. We need the harvest because the fields are ready and we need the grace of harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Oh, we are blessed to be called your children. We are blessed to be called the children of the Most High God. Oh, my Father, hide us under the shadow of your presence. Where oh, the enemy can do us no harm. Oh, have your way, Ribo Honoridaya Sakataya, Robo Shendere Bahanarabose. We silence the mouth of the talker, so go. Let the word of God be fulfilled today. That the purposes of the wicked shall be cut off, O Ribalesh. But thou shalt establish, O Father, the purposes of your people, my Father. You will be a lamp unto our feet. Oh, your word, your word, your way shall be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path or ribosendere o zakala boshendere bolesha rabo sentana baboshida in the great name of jesus shanta rabo shekara babos rabo shanta rabo sekala boshai praise jesus christ praise jesus christ our god reigns and i know he's doing it I want us to continue in the place of prayer. Praise Jesus. Uh, this, this, this is a revelation the Lord gave me through the night. And uh, the Holy Spirit just woke me up. I didn't even know I was leading the service. I saw it at night. <laughs> just at around midnight when I woke up to pray. And I was going through the book of Psalms 36. And <coughs> starting three, the Bible says, that the Lord preserves both man and beast, praise the living God, and that uh, both the high and the low among the sons of men, who we are, praise the living God, find refuge under the shadow of his wings. We are fed from the abundance of his house. 
and we drink from the rivers of his delight. Praise God. So it can never be in vain to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Because we are fed from the abundance of his house. Praise God. That means where there is the house of God, where is the gathering of the saints, there is an abundance. Praise the living God. So anytime we'll be coming to the presence of the Lord, even your body itself is a house because it's the temple of the living God. Praise God. So when you make it a house for the Lord, there is an abundance that you're going to receive from. from. Praise God. And then we, we drink from the rivers of his delight. Praise the living God. So what is the delight of the Lord? It is the laws and the commands he has given us. So as we follow the laws and the commands, we drink from that river. And we know it is a river of life. Praise God. And the revelation the Lord was giving me is that of preservation. And he brought before me a very sick person. And I started praying and the Lord was telling me the problem is because you people are losing hope because the situation looks hopeless. Yet I've given you the power to preserve because I'm the one who preserves. And the Lord told me when you have food, you've cooked it. If it takes another two, or even one day, the food goes bad. Praise God. But when you put it in your fridge, you can eat it and after another three days. So that's how God preserves man. If there is that power to preserve that food, what about God and humanity? So we should not get beaten by the way things are. But we know there is one who is able to preserve. Praise the living God. There is one that is able to preserve. I don't know where I read it, Pastor, but I think it was in Job. That the wild dog gets sick. Goes around the forest with no one to help it. Praise the living God. And gets sick to the point of death. But then, that dog with no one to take care of it, gets healed. Who heals that dog? It is, it is it, maker. Praise God. What about you? We will be preserved. So I want us to rise up and trust God for preservation. Preservation of our Christian life because we really need to pray. What I saw yesterday, I realized the church has to pray that our salvation be preserved. Praise the living God. We pray for the preservation of our families, the preservation of our jobs, is very important because I've realized people are doing all kinds of things in these workplaces. Praise the living God. I think it has just been a time of revelations. Yes, well, Friday we went for um, some kind of a, a dinner for, for at our place of work. And one person just stood and spoke so bad about the church until everybody was shocked. And this someone who is high earning a lot of money, and she was really despising the Christians. But anyway, God gave us the grace to stand and say no. Praise the living God. So I'm imagining, even in our places of work, we need to be preserved. Praise God. So let us stand up and trust God for preservation. We have the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Father, in the prophet, mighty name of Jesus, thank you because you are our God, our maker, our creator. Thank you because the Bible tells me that you created the earth, that it may be inhabited, and you saw it was well for man to inhabit the earth. So we are not in this world by mistake. We are not here by coincidence. It is because when you created the earth, you said, you were created and it will be inhabited and you have made us the habitation and we go back to Genesis to the place of the original plan to the place of the original work you said that man should take dominion but because of the fall of sin that dominion lost its power but you knew in you in your grace and in your divine love you went back to bring your son Jesus to come and bring this dominion power. Now because uh, those who have accepted Christ Jesus have been made one with the Father through the blood of the sanctification, we take back our dominion in our places of work. We take back our dominion in our marriages, oh God. We take back that 
dominion with our children. We take that dominion. That they'll be the hands and not the tails. They'll be the first and not the last. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, even in the church of Jesus Christ, we take back that dominion of Father and we say we are strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, we take back our dominion because we know you will preserve us, oh God. You will preserve us under the shadow of your wings where the enemy can do us no harm. You will protect us, oh Father, from every deadly pestilence and even from the, sna the snare of the fall. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, oh Father, if we make you our defender, the most high our protector no harm shall come near us oh God no violence will come near our tent and this is our portion in the time of war you will preserve us oh God in the time of famine the word of God says uh, you provide for us plenty in the sun scorched land uh, you will provide for us uh, you will take care of our frame uh, and so shall be our portion in the land of the living when there is a the famine, we shall be fed from the abundance of your house. When the rivers go dry, we shall drink from the rivers of your delight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our children, my father, shall be protected of the Lord. They shall be great in the Lord, oh God. Our sons will be great, my father, and our daughters will be like the columns uh, that are down the altar my father reboze keremash erase your word oh yes my father you preserved Isaac in the land of famine Isaac was prosperous Isaac was proper prosperous he harvested he planted and harvested in the land of famine in the land of his adversity oh rabo shenderebo in the place of our diversity you will preserve us oh god we will plant and we will harvest thereof in the name of jesus christ oh rama zekerere oh rabo sundala wakanda in the place of that sickness we shall receive our healing because by the stripes of jesus we were healed and we were made whole. The price has already been paid. The paid all about the medication has already been provided. We come in the place of faith and we say we are preserved. We are preserved. Oh God, our work is preserved. We shall not plant and another harvest thereof. Oh, Riba Kanda Sayada. We shall plant. And we shall harvest and eat of the harvest oak. Rima Shandalabos until the other year. We shall even eat, oh Father, what comes out of the harvest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Until on the seventh year, we shall rest and allow others to come and feed from our fields because we are blessed and we have harvested in plentiful in the mighty name of Jesus. Rambo Zekelelebo. Ruta ka sandala bo shende, o robo se kalama zakata kata, robo sendelele ba handa ba bo sua, riata la bo sendelele ba kanda, o rianda ba sua la bo shendelele. In the name of Jesus, oh, we thank you for the covenant of blood. We trust in this covenant, this covenant. Blood has been shed. We are assured there is not just another covenant. It is a covenant of blood. And that blood is going to preserve us. Oh, Shandarabo Shikiria. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Praise God. You know, I've forgotten to get to me as a bit. Praise Jesus. So I want us to just pray for the word. Praise the Lord. Like five minutes. We trust God for the word that is going to, to do great in our midst. Praise God. Because the word of God is God himself visiting us. Let's, let's just trust God for the word. 
Father, we thank you because of the food that is just to be set at table before us, which is your word. Thank you, Lord Almighty, as we receive it. We receive it with thanksgiving, O King of glory. Father, we pray that you may open us our spiritual understanding, our spiritual eyes, O King of glory. Help us to, my Father, understand what the Word of God is doing in our lives today. We pray for the speaker of the day, King of glory. We are soaking the speaker of the day in the blood of Jesus. We pray for a special grace, O Father, even the grace of miracles of signs and wonders. We are praying for a new anointing of today. Father, we are also praying. The Bible tells me unto the angel of the church in this and this. So every day church has an angel. We pray that the angel of the impact church, Westlands, oh Father, may be alert to the King of glory to come and deliver the portion that is meant for us, oh King of glory, to cause us stand at the door, King of glory, and fight every battle that we could be facing in a moment like this, even as the church of Jesus Christ. We thank you for Pastor Andrew. We thank you for Mama Deborah because you gave them my Father, as the prophets of the house of King of Glory, how we pray, Jehovah God, the wisdom that comes from you may rest upon them, O King of Glory, and that the Spirit of God be upon them, O King of Glory, to give them the counsel of heaven, as you are with Moses, as you are with Paul, be with them, O God. May you not leave them, O Father. Father, personally, I'm trusting you that today we're going to experience the newness of your grace, oh Father. The anointing that breaks your King of glory. Let the one be filled with the power and the glory of God. We rise against every spirit that has risen itself against the will of God. Maroha ya kusimama kwenye lango. Tuna kukata katika jina la Yesu. Hauna mamlaka hauna uweza tunapokea nguvu katika roho mtakatifu na tunakuamlisha uondoke katika hiki kikao Mungu wa Israeli ndiye mtawala mkuu na ni katika jina la Yesu tumeomba na kuamini But God is great. Hallelujah. And I think uh, I agree with your word that the glory of God will come down this morning. And there will be healing. There will be, I was asking for God to refresh me. Yeah, to revive me this morning. And I believe that those are just attacks. Because uh, the devil already knows what is ahead of us. Hallelujah. Uh, we are going to call upon uh, the praise and worship so that they can come and worship God. Yeah? And this is the day that the Lord has made to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Welcome and yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we lift up our hands once again? And just bless His Majesty. tribe of Judah, I am that I am, majesty, we give you worship, we give you worship, thank you for your presence and glory in this place, in the name of Jesus. Somebody just lift up your hands in the understanding and just begin to worship him. Begin to bless his name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
you, Jesus.
Can you just lift up your voice and worship Him? Worship Him in the spirit if you can. Worship Him in the understanding. In the name of Jesus. Just lift up your voice and worship. 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 Kamina Sanila Vina Sani. Rinesina Vanela Savina. Bazina Tetela Sani. Katena Sani Apala. We worship your majesty in the name of Jesus. Asante Yesu, Asante Yesu, Asante Yesu. Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Say Asante Yesu Say Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Wana wa majish Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Atuna kupenda sema Atuna kupenda mwana Ah, 
It's you there I see. It's you there I see. And there is power in your name. And miracles happen in your name. As we lift our hands in praise, it's you there I see. It's you there I see. Somebody help me say, at the center, at the center, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Lift up a voice and say, on the center, on the center of Just raise your voice and say, it's you there I see, it's you there I see, it's you there I see, yeah. for there is power, there is power in your name, there is power in your name, miracles happen in your name. Voice in praise, say, as we lift our voice in praise, see you that I see, see you that I see, see you that I see, once again, see, see, at the center, at the center of it all, Jesus, see you that I see, Sanaya Taya by a singer, we raise a voice, we say. At the center, at the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. This is the reason, for oh, there is power, there is power in your name. Hey, miracles happen, miracles happen in your name. And as we lift our voice in praise, eh? as we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, hallelujah, it's you that I see, you are bigger, bigger than the biggest, you are stronger, stronger than the strongest, you are higher, higher than the highest, you are greater, greater than the greatest, eh? You are strong, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, you are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, you are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. Jesus, somebody say, Jesus, somebody call that day. Say, Jesus, 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 shout that day. Call that day. Say that day once again. Say Jesus. Jesus. Shout that name, Jesus. Jesus. At the center of it all, Lord, it's you there I see. There I see at the center of the road. It's you there I see. It's you there I see. Just in one minute, can you tell him 
above every situation, circumstance, above every disease. It's you that you see. It's him that you see. In the name of Jesus, as far as you can see, I shall give you. You want to see the healing of Jesus over that sickness? Can you just tell him it is you that I see? Shani Tanande Zania Leke Bina Sani Labane Savina Haske Bredi Sevena Matela Zania Tata Ribredi Savena Satela Thank you Jesus Hallelujah Hakuna Kama Wewe 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 Tuna inama tuna inuka tukisema Wewe ni mungu Tuna inama tuna inuka tukisema Kuna kama wewe Tukisema wewe ni mungu Tuna inama tuna inuka tukisema Hakuna, hakuna kama wewe, hakuna kama wewe, hakuna kama wewe, hakuna kama wewe, hakuna, hakuna kama wewe, hakuna kama wewe, hakuna kama wewe, hakuna kama wewe. Tuna ina ma, tuna inu katu kisema wewe ni mungu. Tuna ina ma, tuna inu katu kisema. For the Lord, Hallelujah. Let's shout for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, 
sababu ya kutukuza Bwana maisha ni mwangu
mokozi wangu na minitaimba Imba Yesu ni mokozi wangu na minitaimba Imba 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 service for the first time. Is there anyone who has visited us for the first time? Let me actually come to this side because I think that other side everybody is yeah, all, even this side. This one, do you have any? Are you the first, first time visitor? Or you're not first time? It seems like everybody, yeah we don't have first time visitors but I recognize we have a new keyboardist. I think we should clamp for him. He's doing an amazing job. Hallelujah. Yeah, I didn't recognize it's not Dennis, and I'm like, ah, okay. We, these are the fruits of the conference, youth conference. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, I would like to call anyone with a testimony this time. Anyone with a testimony? Yule Akona Mwana Akona Ushifuda. Wow, awesome. Amen. Thank you, Alice. Okay. Thank 
okay, standing here, I want to give all the glory and honor to my God for this far he has brought me. I want to keep on rejoicing him for the great things he's doing into my life. I remember the past few months have been going down and down and down. But my God came, came to my rescue. He lifted me up. He gave me strength. He consulted my heart, of which if any man was given that chance to do, I think he would have been done like that in my life. So all I can say, I'm doing very fine. I'm seeing many things happening in my life which I never imagined. I've been working as a casual in one of the, these companies here in Westlands. But through God's miracles, I got a permanent job over there. I've been taken as a permanent staff of uh, Ultra Equipment Company. I don't have anything to give unto my God. I just want to keep on glorifying his name, uplifting his name, and living upon his life. I am so much encouraged. I, I remember, I remember telling Alice that she'll, you remember, I told you you'll get a permanent job. And here we have it. Amen? Yeah, I told her I started like that and also got a permanent job. I'm glad to hear that. Amen? Awesome. Anyone else with a testimony? Before I close this session. Hallelujah. Anyone? I, oh, somebody is... Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Benjamin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, yes, I'm so glad to be here this morning. Yeah. I thank God uh, that He's kept me, He's kept my family. We're still rejoicing in the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I just want to say. I, I think this year is a year of favor in my life for the first time yeah uh, ever since we got married yesterday we got to host our parents pastor Deborah and pastor Andrew hallelujah uh, uh, they may they may think it was so casual but to us we I mean it can't be a normal thing it has to be God's work hallelujah so we want to glorify the Lord that because he's brought the servants of the Lord into our house, into our home, so greater things are going to be done in our family. Hallelujah. So that's my testimony. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. By the way, it's never the same. Trust you me. It's never the same. I'm also looking forward to have the second visit. <laughs> Everybody should be looking forward to have them in their houses. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So this time I will take this opportunity to, yeah, it's the time for giving. Please clap your hands. <laughs> Worship God with our tithes, offering, thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I think you should stand up. By the way, that's our worship. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, and just to remind us that um, of the pay bill number, that's the, if you're giving via MPESA, that is 5777 what? Yeah, amen. But I would also like to call the pastor. Let me just pray and then I call the pastor to come and say something. Father God, we give you praise and honor. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given unto us, O oh God, to worship you, Lord, with our giving, O oh God, for the small token. Uh, it's a small token of what you've given us, O oh Jehovah Father. As a a sign of appreciation, Jehovah God, as a sign of worship. May you receive all the honor, may you receive all the glory this morning. We thank you, Jehovah Father, for blessing us because you have blessed each and every one of us, O oh Father. King of glory, we want to advance your kingdom. How we pray that you bless us, O oh God. May it be a seed, O oh Jehovah Father. That, to Lord, we are laying into the ground and it will germinate, Jehovah God. That, King of glory, we will dominate in this place. We will dominate in Westlands, O oh Jehovah Father. Through the evangelism, O oh King of glory, buying of the land, Jehovah God. 
and equipment in this place, Jehovah King of Glory. It is, doesn't matter how few we are, but we believe you're going to bless us, oh Father. We give you praise and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Welcome, Pastor. Can you appreciate Sister Winnie? Come on, let's appreciate her. Amen. Hallelujah. Pokea sifa e mungue. Kea sifa e mungue. Kea sifa e mungue. Pokea sifa e mungue. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Someone give him praise. Woo. Give him the praise. Woo. Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of God. I want to thank you so much for your commitment, for your sacrifice, for giving in the house of God. Amen. This is an amazing church. Just clap for yourselves. Amen. Last Sunday, I mentioned how the Lord had put it on my heart that we need to have new seats and we need 40 seats and each one going for 3,000 shillings. And I want to testify that as we were ending the service, one of us pledged to pay for all those seats. Now, if you are giving praise to God, come on, somebody. Amen. So, I believe before the end of this month, because that was the pledge, by the end of the month, we will be sitting on, on better, comfortable seats. Amen. And uh, there's, there are some things you pray for and you forget about them. When we came here in the morning, I, I walked outside here and I began to pace and pray. And then I saw this place, just on Soina Kid, there was a big club that every time would be in the Kesha, it would make so much noise. And so one day I just walked out and I was just angry. I said, Father, let this club be closed in the name of Jesus because we cannot be competing with that sound. You know, when I walked out today, I realized it was closed. I don't even know when. <laughs> Come on, somebody, if you're clapping, you answer Jesus. I mean, you, you, when you have time, walk out there. When you look there now, it's, it's an office place. They have put, they have done very well. And it looks like a big hole. I was like, God, maybe we should move there. Because it's, it's a much bigger place. But the bigger miracle is, you know, God answers prayer and sometimes you don't even know. I don't even know when it was closed. But thank God it is no more. Hallelujah. So what, what God, God is doing something in this place. So I wanted to say, um, there are some people who, are, who had pledged towards chairs. Some other people came and said, by the way, thank you so much for pledging. Last Sunday when Dr. Neba came, a lot of people pledged. It's amazing. You people are amazing. Your heart, your giving, your sacrifice. 
So I wanted to say, if you can allow us, because there are still so many needs in the house of God. Um, I just felt like, you know, sometimes we, 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 we forget that every time we bless God's work, we are blessed. I'm not saying this as a way of, of, of bragging, but by God's grace, as a family, we have, you know, contributed to a lot of the equipment in this place. And they're not cheap equipment. Each of these keyboards costs about 300,000 shillings. And we have two. You know, the computers, the, the mixers, the drums. Uh, we have had a few things that we were blessed with by certain servants of God. You know, of course, like that keyboard and the... Uh, but this, the other last week, we found out that most of this equipment is getting old. We brought a technician here who fixed uh, the speakers, fixed our bass guitar. It was broken, fixed the electric guitar. Um, but then we still realized that we need to start giving an opportunity to all of us to participate in these blessings. Amen? So one of the challenges we are having right now is... Uh, it's like two things. When, when, if you notice very well these videos that come out, and by the way, they have been a blessing to people. When we're in the youth are blessed, we got people even from the US, from Uganda, saying they have watched and they are blessed. But when you look at those videos, the lighting is not good. And so we need to buy some lights, like the ones we were having in that worship experience. Because there are people even who told me that, is that, a, I mean, where is that church? The lighting alone changed, <laughs> you know, changed the whole place. And so we need, uh, we need good lights. And to get those lights, at least start with two of them, to cost us about 50000 And so that's what I'm saying. If you had pledged to give to us the seats, now God has provided for the seats. But please don't hold back the money and say, no, 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 now. No, we can still use that money to buy seats. The second thing, we need another camera. One of the challenges we're having with our cameras, they also contribute to the kind of output. They're, all, they're both very old cameras. In fact, one of the cameras that we sometimes use there, it's very old, you know. It still uses tapes, and these days people don't even use tapes anymore. So even when we record things, it becomes a struggle for Dennis to try to capture those things. But somehow we have moved on, praise God. But we have an opportunity uh, next month no, no, the month, the beginning of June, some friends of ours, Bishop Cody and his wife, who have been training the leaders on leadership, they're going to come. They're going to visit Kenya. And uh, come on, bless God. These are powerful servants of God. They have, they have offered to come and help us in the pastor's conference because we're going to have a big crusade in Kibera on the 24th and 25th. And before then, we will have a conference which we want to combine with the Open Heaven Conference, and they're going to come and speak. But because they're coming, we have an opportunity. They can help us get some of this equipment from the U.S. So there's a particular camera that uh, he has identified, which is going for about 70000 And so I was looking at these two things, and I'm honest to agree with God, amen, that some of you who are still you know, maybe someone else was saying, Pastor, I, I was missing the opportunity. I also wanted to pay for all the chairs. No, no. Now you can pay for all that equipment. <laughs> it's only 120000 again, just like the chairs. That, you know, the next time we are having, you know, you never know what God does. We can pray. God can use you. God can use anybody in the world. Yeah, because there's already there's another equipment that we use now to make live stream. One of the friends uh, in the U.S., in fact, the pastor who gave us the keyboard has pledged to help us buy that one, which also goes for about 80,000 shillings. So God has already done a miracle. And that one will come. But when it comes, we want it to have good lighting and a good camera. Someone say it is possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Amazing things have happened. I want us to appreciate the young people. Come on, somebody. The youth are place was so amazing so amazing it was very successful thank you all for giving do you know we'd never we we'll finished the conference with no luck we we're able to pay off everything hallelujah come on somebody 
and, and as I told you, the budget for that youth ablaze was about 50,000, but it was fully paid for. And, and we have also been able to take care of all our staff, pay them, and also pay for the church. I mean, God is amazing. So God is doing amazing things in this place. And, and one of the things that has happened is, I want us to appreciate this young man, Shadrach. Amen. Come on, somebody. Appreciate him. I know he's a visitor. Even today, I don't know whether he's visiting or he's helping us. I don't know. But Shadrach was here in the Youth Ablaze and he really helped us a lot. He's a fine young man studying at Took University. Uh, I think studying architecture in his second year. Uh, but what I like about him, he's very humble and also very talented. And so I want us to stretch forth our hands because I didn't even know Dennis was not going to be around. But by the time Dennis was telling me I will not be around on Sunday, Shadrach had already told me, Pastor, I want to come and be around on Sunday. So God, or, God always knows how to fill in the gaps. Amen. Just stretch forth your hands. Let's bless this young man. It's called Shadrach Kiprop. Just stretch forth your hands. Begin to pray for him. May God bless him. There's not much we can give him, but we can release the blessing and the favor of God upon his life. That just as he has ministered in the house of God today, God will bless him and God will continue to increase him, help him in his studies. Father, we thank you for this young man. We pray that you bless him. May he cause the way before him to be straightened, even as he has filled in the gap today and played so well in your house. May you continue to open greater doors of favor and greater doors of blessing for him and may you bless him in Jesus name. Amen. The other thing that happened is many people got saved. I was expecting to see them today. I don't know why they, they've not showed up but there are quite a number of people that gave their lives to Christ. And uh, come on somebody, give, give God praise, give God praise. I don't remember the numbers exactly, but I think we had about five people that gave their lives to Christ in the Youth of Blaze conference. And, uh, and that's one. The second thing is the other, uh, they, most of you know um, Ke Kevin and Nora. Kevin is the young man who came here and we prayed for him on the day of Thanksgiving. Is it called Kevin? Stephen, sorry, Stephen. Uh, and Stephen, and then Stephen brought, I don't know why they are not here, they were supposed to be here today, but they, th those two are going to get baptized at the end of this month. Come on somebody, clap your hands to Jesus. So in case the last Sunday of this month is going to be a baptism Sunday. So in case you're not baptized, you want to get baptized along with them, you can join them. We're having uh, the classes every Tuesday from 4. And, and we had our first class, discipleship class, this last Tuesday. It was amazing. These guys are growing in the ways of God. And, and so if you want, also want to get baptized, you can join us on Tuesday. But at least remember that. Remember them. Continue to pray for them. We shared a lot. And they, you know, it's not easy when you've just given your life to Christ. But thank God they have great testimonies of, of, of God's doing. Hallelujah. 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 So I want us to, 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 to shift a little bit. Before I forget, another amazing thing that has happened. God is doing so many things. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Wanyama were testifying, but actually they invited us in their home because yesterday we launched the first home sale. Someone clap your hands to Jesus. Ah, that's, you should, should clap better. This, um, this, it, we, we, well, I don't know even whether we, we'll just call them impact home fellowships or whatever, but these home fellowships are so powerful because they, they help, you know, it's an altar in the family, but they also help, you know, open up the, the heavens around the family, around the home. Yesterday we had a great home, I mean a great time, I was with, 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 with my wife, and that fellowship is in Kino. So it's going to be headed by our sister Susan. I think she's just walked out. Um, I know I haven't told Pastor Alice this, but I was, I've really been thinking she's a gifted woman of God and very soon, even without telling her first, 
I think she's going to be overseeing all our home fellowships. Because this is not going to be the first, the last one. Come on, somebody, clap your hands to Jesus. We, we have started in, uh, in Kino. And everywhere we'll be able to at least get three families together, we'll start a home, a home fellowship. So every place, if we find that we have about three families around Kangemi, we'll start a fellowship there. Already now we have, uh, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Wanyama, Mr. and Mrs. Wanyama 1 and Mr. and Mrs. Wanyama 2. James and Alice, they are all in the same area and also our sister Susan. And so they have started us off. Um, yeah, so we will, uh, we will continue on, but already yesterday was powerful. That home is blessed. Thanks for receiving us. Amen. Amen. And then this morning, we launched the youth service. Come on, somebody. Clap your hands to Jesus. So amazing things are happening in this place. And it was a powerful beginning. Powerful beginning. Staket, we found Staket leading prayer. Then Sister Rafa was leading the service. And then um, we had a powerful word from Evangelist Chris. Amen. Can we appreciate that man of God? We, 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 we will do it again. We'll find some other time and officially, you know, pray for him as we, as we ordain all the other leaders and all that. But this morning, we, we laid hands on him, prayed for him. He's going to be our youth pastor in Impact Church. And God is going to use him to pastor our young people. Amen. So can we uh, go ahead and thank God for all these amazing, amazing things that God has done. Amen. So we are growing, we are getting bigger, we are getting deeper, we are we're growing wider, and, and we give God all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And on that note, let's welcome the children as they go for their service. All the children, please come. Even we know we have some visiting children that I have seen. Please let them come and join us. Uh, we will pray for you. And uh, all of you, please just come. We're going to pray for you. And then release you into your service. Let me ask Pastor Alice, please pray for the children as they go for the children's service. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before the throne of your mercy. We thank you this morning for the gift of children, O Jehovah Mighty. Thank you because you know these children. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I surround them with the fire of the Spirit. Praying that, Lord, you continue to guard and guide them, O oh Lord. May your Holy Spirit continue to guide them, Lord, as they go to their classes. May they be remembering whatever they are taught. We know that you say that children should be in your house. And that's why we are committing these children into your able hands. May you be there for them, remember them, even their teacher Angela. May you remember her, may you give her wisdom as she continues to stay with, this, with these children. And this Father, we pray trust in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Can we clap for the children as they go? Amen. Let's clap for them. Clap for them as they go. You're all welcome. Please go, even the ones who are the, the, the little, the older ones, uh, we had we started a, a teen service, but I don't know whether we're going to have it today. So those who can join the other ones, you're you're welcome. If you want to stay in the service, you're still welcome, and uh, God will be glorified. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, Steve and Nora, we had talked about you guys. And, uh, but now you're here. We, I just told the people that we're going to, to baptize you at the end of the month. And uh, so I know from next Sunday you're going to be coming earlier. So can we appreciate them? Can we appreciate them? In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Hallelujah. Ah, only one person is ready. I, can, let me say it again now. Let me hear. Are you ready for the word of God? Matthew chapter 21, we are going to read together. I want us to read together. We're going to read many verses. Chapter 21 from verse 1 
to verse 16. So we are going to read together. Today I want us to do a little bit, a little bit different. I want you to stand up as you hold your Bibles. And uh, I will read one verse and you read the next. Okay? So I will start uh, verse 1. Then you read verse 2. I will read verse 3. You read verse 4 like that as we give honor to the word of God. Okay. So I read verse 1. And when they came near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples on ahead. If anyone says anything to you, you shall reply, the Lord needs them, and he will let them go without delay. Say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lonely and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the fall of a donkey. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their coats upon them and he seated himself on them. And the crowds went ahead of him and those that followed him kept shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And the crowds replied, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And he said to them, the scripture says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased. Amen. Amen. I'm going to speak to us today, this afternoon, on a subject that I'm picking from verse 10. Who is this? Tell your neighbor, who is this? What kind of man is this? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give honor and praise to your word. Because your word is anointed. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It is as discerner of the thoughts and intents of every man's heart. Father, your word is powerful. It is quick. I pray that this morning you anoint my lips to declare this anointed word. That your word will come forth as fire. Your word will be like a hammer and will cause transformation in each of our lives. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You may now be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So we see a story that is very familiar. I believe all of us know that today is Palm Sunday. It is the day that, it is not the actual day, but it is a day that is celebrated when people remember what the scripture that we just read in Matthew 21, when Jesus entered triumphantly 
into Jerusalem. But we also know that this day was exactly a week before what we now celebrate as the Resurrection Sunday. And that week is called the Holy Week because in that week, Jesus entered into Jerusalem. But in the same week, Jesus was arrested. Jesus was beaten. He went through so much. And then he was crucified uh, on the Friday night. And then he sp stayed in the tomb for three days. And on the last day, on the third day, he rose up again. And that week in it is our victory. Hallelujah. But we, today we need to understand who is this man? Who is this? Look at your neighbor again and say, what kind of man is this? Who is Jesus? What differentiates Jesus Christ from any man that has ever lived? From any man that will ever live? He is the hero of the Bible story. Everything in the scriptures centers around this man. The prophets in the Old Testament, they all spoke about him. And the New Testament is the revelation of who he was, of who he is. He is the hero of the Bible story. In fact, history, as it is said, is his story. Everything, until even those who wrote history had to change the times and dates. That the, there are dates which are called BC, which is before Christ. And, and these are people who are not even believers, but they, 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 they had no choice. But even time is marked in the days that were before him and those that were after him. There is no birthday of any man that is celebrated in the entire world except the birthday of Jesus Christ. Though we, we, we can, you know, people can debate and say this is not the day, but the truth is there is only one man that is recognized by all men that his birth marked history. Who is this man? This man was not just a mere man that walked on the face of the earth. This man was not just a man like us. Though he looked like us, though he lived like us, but he was a man that left a mark, left a legacy. Because of him, we are seated here today. And not just us, but hundreds and millions of thousands of people are in places of worship, even in places like China, where the gospel is not freely preached. There are still thousands of people who even risk their lives to meet in places of worship because of this man. Who is this man, Jesus? Not only was he a great man, but a time came when the Bible says he walked on the waters. And the seas and the waves obeyed him. And the disciples said, what kind of man is this? Even the seas and the waves obey him. Ask your neighbor, who is this man? I present to you, beloved children of God, that this man is not just... Someone who walked through history. He's not just the lily of the valley. He's fairer than the lily of the valley. He's not just the morning star. He's brighter than the morning star. He is the greatest. He's the biggest. He's the, he's the alpha and the omega. He is the center of the universe. Everything that is, is because of him. Everything that will be, is consisted on him. He is the God. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Nothing that is, was created without him. He is the God who was. He is the God who is. And he is the God who is to come. Yes, 
Buddha came and died and he was buried and everybody knows his grave. Muhammad was here and he died and he was buried and everybody knows where he was buried. But we know a man that when even the power of the grave could not hold him. There is only one man that even when he, he the grave tried, even death could not contain him. Who is this man? If you understand, have a revelation of this man, it will change how you live for him. It will change how you serve him. It will change what you fear. You begin to realize that because of this man, you are in a place of greatness. He did not just leave, but he came to set a place for you. He came as a trailblazer. He came as a pace setter. He came as a man that because, he says, because I overcome, in, in John 16, 33, he looked at his disciples and said, be of good cheer. In this world, you will have great tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The only guarantee that we have that we can overcome the world is because the man Jesus walked before us. There is no path that we will ever walk that he has never walked. There is no place we will ever go that he has never gone. Because he overcame, he overcame the power of sickness. He overcame the power of poverty. The Bible says in the book of Galatians that the man Jesus, though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor. That through his poverty we might become rich. The Bible says that surely he was wounded chastised for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed because of the man Jesus there is nothing you'll ever need in life that he did not cater for not only did he take away your sin he took care of your infirmities he took care of your heart wounds he took care of your poverty he took care of your bondage he came to deliver the oppressed that's why he stood and say the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has sent me to preach the good news to the poor to set free the captives to, op to open the eyes of the blind to declare the acceptable year of the Lord I came to present to you children of God that the man Jesus did not only die and rise again but he is here today he is not just a story. He is not something we read about in the book. This is not just a novel. This is not something. This is a book that is alive and active. And walking within its pages is the man Jesus Christ. That when you begin to receive this word, the same things that he did. He said, I you can even do greater things if you understand who this man is. Turn to your neighbor and say, who is this? Do you really know him? Do you really know him? Do you have a revelation of who this man is? Do you really ha have you ever had an encounter with this man? Who is this? Paul was on the road of Damascus. He was he thought he was a religious man. He thought he knew God. But God hit him and kicked him off the horse which he was on and he was blinded. And, and, and the Bible says he saw a man and he says, who are you, Lord? He, he thought the Jesus that Paul knew was the Jesus that he thought he had heard about. The Jesus that he had had walking in the streets. But then he had an encounter with a Jesus in a dimension. That he had never seen before. Who is this man? And Jesus looks at Paul and says, I am Jesus whom you persecute. And Paul was like, no, I don't think I knew him. He had never understood Jesus. Do you know the Jesus that you serve? Do you know the Jesus that you worship? Do you know the Jesus 
that died for you. Have you had an encounter with Jesus? No wonder when Paul was about to die, when he wrote this book of the Philippians, he was in a prison cell about to die. He had come to the end of his life. He did not say, I want to do more miracles. He did not say, I want to heal more sick people. He did not say, I want to prophesy more. He did not say, I want to get accurate words of knowledge. He did not say, I want people to know my name. He did not say, I want another car. I want another house. He says, I want to know him. Do you know him? Who is this? Someone say, who is this? The Bible says he's a stumbling block to the Greeks. He's a God who causes diviners to become mad. He's a God who causes the wisdom of the wise to become foolishness. Who is this man? I want us to look at that scripture. Philippians, Paul cries out and says, I want to know him. Philippians chapter 3. Church, let me tell you something. If there is anything that I want you to know, it's not about how powerful I can preach or any man can preach. I want every time I stand at this altar that you not see me, but you see Jesus. I want to disappear that he may appear. I want to diminish that he will increase. I want to decrease that he may increase. I want him to be known more and more. It does, it's not about my name. It's not about our church. It's not about our little thing that we're doing here. It's not about any other church. Friends, it is all about Jesus. He is the hero of the Bible story. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the first and the last. He's the greatest of all men that have ever lived. He is the one who was, the one who is, the one that is to come. He shines brighter than the sun. I don't know how to talk about this man, Jesus. But I pray that you will have a revelation of him. He's greater than any preacher will ever preach about him. He is greater than any writer will ever write about him. He is greater than anyone will ever sing about him. He is greater than your greatest imagination. One day we will meet him and we will realize that we never really knew who he was. How I pray that I will have a glimpse into eternity. That I will have an encounter with him. That I will not live like a pauper when he created me to live greater than that. That the blood that he shed will have full effect in my life. That I, I will not live under bondage when he died to deliver me. That I will not live under sickness when he died to heal me. That I will not live under oppression when he paid the ultimate price with his own blood, with his own body, that I may never know sickness, infirmity, disease. Where, where is the church that knows the man Jesus? Where is the church that can walk in miracle signs and wonders? Not because of any other thing, but because they have known Jesus. They have walked with him. Philippians, the Bible says, Philippians chapter 3, I like what it says, let's begin from verse 3, I want to see it in the Amplified, I like, Paul says this word, says, for we are, we are the circumcision, who serve God by his spirit. Let me read it here. For we Christians are the true circumcision who worship God in spirit and by the spirit of God and exalt and glory and pride ourselves in where do we glory? Someone help me. Where do we get up? Where do we pride ourselves? Because we have a big house? Because we have a big car, because we have a big church, because people know us, where do we pride ourselves? 
Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, not, not the, 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 the strong man boast in his strength, but let those who boast, boast in this, that they know him, that they know him, that they have had an encounter with him. We are the true circumcision. What makes us a true circumcision is when we glory only in Christ. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope, is Christ alone. Have you heard that song before? In Christ alone, I put my trust, I find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope, is Christ alone. Who is this man? Do you know him? Do you really know him? Or did you just come to church and say a prayer and say you have received him? But you have never really encountered him. Do you really know him? Someone close your eyes and raise your hand and say, Jesus, I want to know you. I want a revelation of you. I don't want to pride in my tribe. I don't want to pride in my background. I don't want to pride in my children. I don't want to pride in my job. I want to just exalt and glory and pride in Jesus. The, what thrills my soul will be Jesus. The lover of my soul will be Jesus. Everything I desire will be Jesus. Listen, we are the true circumcision who exalt and glory and pride ourselves. Now listen to what he says. We put no confidence or dependence on what we are in the flesh. Do you know one of the things that the enemy does to people, even Christians, even pastors, he brings them to a place where they begin to glory on what they are in the flesh. I live in such and such an area. I drive such and such a car. I work at such and such a place. I wear this kind of suit, which is made by this brand, by this designer. I, the kind of watch that I put on, the kind of bag. <laughs> you know, there, 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 there are places you can go to and you will know that you do not know. I went, I was at a certain airport somewhere. <laughs> I was at a certain airport, and I, I, I realized I had not carried enough clothes. So I walked, I will not say the brand name, I walked into one of the shops, and I wanted to buy a t-shirt. Do you know how much the t-shirt cost? <laughs> 30,000 Kenya shillings, a t-shirt. I went about 28,000, because it was $250. A t-shirt. I looked at this lady, I said, I didn't ask for a shirt or a suit. I said, that t-shirt. I said, yeah. That's the power of the brand. And people, someone will just wear it and make sure that label is seen, you know. As you walk around, you can't. <laughs> people glory in phones. They are phones and then they are iPhones. <laughs> There are tablets and then there are iPads. Someone with a tablet with an iPad, you tell them, they say, No, no, that's not a tablet, that's an iPad. People glory in who they are. And you find even churches are glorying how many we are, you know, where we are, what the kind of you know lights we have, you know, the kind of the Bible says the true circumcision. <sighs> Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2. He says, I, when I came to you, 
I chose not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ. Friends, how I pray that will be the true circumcision. And the true circumcision are those who have encountered Christ. <laughs> their, their joy, their pride, everything about them. When you have a conversation with them for 10 minutes, they'll start talking about Jesus. Because it is not how their background... You know, there are people who just pride in the fact that they are from a certain tribe. Eh? Me, I don't arrive. I land. <laughs> Yawa. Anyway, God says we are the true circumcision. We put no confidence in the flesh or on outward privileges and physical advantages and external appearances. Oh, praise God. You know, you know there are people who just know that, you know, yeah, you know, when God was creating, he just took extra time on me, you know. I am just beautiful. I'm amazing. And they pride in that. And there's nothing wrong with being beautiful. But the moment you take your eyes off of Jesus and you begin to glory in your beauty, in your wisdom, in your money, in what you have, then you have not truly been circumcised. Someone say, Lord, circumcise my heart. off everything that I've been priding myself in. Cut off everything that I've been focusing on. Even ministry can be something that God needs to circumcise and make you get to a place where the moment even you stand on the altar you're like, it's all about Jesus. Let me, let me disappear. You know, John had come to that place. John chapter 3 and verse 30. They were telling him, do you know that man who was baptizing? You're baptizing. That man has taken over. People are all running to him. They're all going to his just John looked at them and says, he must increase. I must. Friends, it's all about Jesus. Church is all about Jesus. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. My desire, like Paul cried out, continue in this Philippians chapter 3, like Paul cried out, is that I may know him. Someone say, I may know him. I want to know him. Someone help me. If you're turning those verses, I want to know him. Go to the next verse and the next verse. He says, let us stop here a little bit. Paul is saying, though for myself, I have at least grounds. Eh? So he says, what an eringe kidogo. You know, I have some grounds to rely on the flesh. This guy was educated in the highest universities. You know, there are people who just... You know, it's, 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 it's interesting how anything can make someone proud. Someone can be proud because they have a better accent than you. Someone can... <laughs> someone can just be proud. You find they find their pride in the school they went to. In the university they attended. You know, you went to a school. I went to an academy, Buana. <laughs> I went to a group of schools, you know. <laughs> hey. So Paul had been to the group of schools of his day, you know. He was, a, the Bible calls him a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He's not just in the level of the Pharisees. He has been trained by, sat under the feet of Gamaliel. Eh? <laughs> It's like sitting under the greatest professor in the land. See, do you know what kind of professor taught me? It says, if any man considers to have any reason to rely on the flesh and his physical and outward advantages, I have more. This man is not just, it says, if you think you're proud. Now, he begins to list them. Go ahead. Verse 5. I was circumcised. See, that is something people can also be proud of. 
when I was only eight days old. <laughs> of the rest of Israel, a Benjamin, of the tribe of Benjamin, <laughs> a Hebrew of Hebrews. Of the observance of the law. I don't just observe the law. I'm a Pharisee. Let's continue on. As to my zeal. This man is so zealous. You people just think you're zealous because you're coming to church. Him, he's zealous because he even persecutes the church. Do you know he was persecuting the church because he thought he was doing God a service? He was persecuting the church because he knew that God was happy. Until he encountered Jesus, he's like, now who are you? I thought, <laughs> I thought I am a Pharisee of the, of the, by the low standard of righteousness. Ah. I was proven to be blameless and no fault was found in me. This means this is a man who has never stolen, he has never killed, he has never missed a Sabbath. I mean, according to the law, he's what? Without fault. Are we together? Do you know one of the toughest things, the saddest things in the church, is that some of us are just proud because we think we are holier than other people. Do you know it's terrible to be self-righteous? Because you'll be like, you're just like that, 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 the, the older brother. You're like, this boy went out there. He messed up his life. I've been in the house serving you. I've been a good, 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 good son. You know, now you, he's just come back. You're cutting him a fatten, you know, making him a fatted calf and all that. Me, I've been in the house, you know. Never, never. I mean, I was saved when I was like six years old. I've never sinned. I've never done this. I bind the spirit of self-righteousness. The older brother mentality. You even see people who are struggling with sin. Like, how can they? How? how? Hey, don't say how until you find yourself in a place where you need the mercy of God. The Bible says, if anyone is overtaken in a fault, let those who are spiritual restore him by taking care of themselves, lest they too. The Bible says, be where, whoever thinks he stands, be careful. You have always to say it is by the grace of God that I am who I am. I'm not better than anybody else. I've been in church, yes. I've served God, yes. But God is able to save a man from the streets right now who is doing drugs, who is sleeping around. Who, and, and God is able to turn them into a son of Abraham. Just Christ say that. Says God is able even to get the stones and turn them into a son of Abraham. So it doesn't make you any better that you have been around church. You only have to always say it is by the grace of God. I could have been anywhere, but because of Jesus. So Paul says, I was just, I was upright. Verse 7. But whatever. This is now, someone say Whatever. Whatever. May you never pride yourself because you pray too much. It is by God's grace that you pray. May you never pride yourself because you fast more than others. It is by God's grace that you fast. May you never find a place in you that thinks that just because you can do miracles, because you have seen some word of knowledge, because you have prophesied accurately, that now you are big and powerful. God knows how to reduce people to size. You should always say whatever. Someone say whatever. whatever. Oh, somebody say whatever. whatever. My crowns, my degrees, my achievements, my background, where I live, what I've achieved in life, what I know, all those things that have been gained to me, I have come to consider as one combined loss for the sake of Christ. Let me shock somebody here. What, what is standing between you having a revelation of Christ is that thing that you think is gained for you.
That thi- do you know anything that you think is, oh, hey, me, my tribe, my family. Do you even know who you're talking to? <sighs> I don't know whether it happens here, but there are there are certain places in, in, in Uganda, some tribes, which will tell you, hey, I am, um, let me use the, the word, I, you know, we had, a, we had a clan where I grew up from. They were called Basiji, okay? So a lady will tell a man, do you know what kind of lady you're talking to? I am a Musiji of the Basiji. You don't joke around with us. We will cut you down to the right size. Are there certain people like that in this nation? <laughs> you, don't, you don't just play around with them. They are basiji of... <laughs> that thing, that cup ride, is what is stopping you from seeing Jesus. I said what you think you have, the money that you think you have, what you think you have accumulated... Every time I come in the presence of God, I say, God, help me to unlearn whatever I have learned. Help me, oh God, empty me of myself. Empty me even of everything that I think I know. I just want to know you. I just want you to be the center of my life. I just want you to be everything. I want to know you, Jesus. Who is this man? The man had walked in in Jerusalem for three and a half years, but they did not know him. And unfortunately, some of them who should have had an encounter with him, they got angry. The Bible says they got agitated. Can you imagine Jesus is in your midst? Instead of being happy because of his presence, you get angry. Who is this man? Children are crying out for him. People are putting their clothes down and worshiping him. You know, I, I like the story that they say about the donkey. Of course, it is not true, but they say that that donkey that was, had carried Jesus, you know, it was now walking around Jerusalem the next day. And, 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 uh, and, the, and, and, and the other colt, I guess the one which was behind, says, hey, how come today guys are not throwing their clothes? You know, we are the same donkey. <laughs> These people don't realize we are the one who are crying Jesus yesterday, you know? And then the the other cult looks up to this donkey and says, hey, you know the only thing that made us, people even put their clothes? It's because they were not seeing us, they were seeing Jesus. It is because we were carrying Jesus. We are on our own, we are nothing. What makes us good is because of Jesus. We could have been wicked, I'm telling you. The Bible says the heart of man is what? Wicked. And if it wasn't for Jesus, maybe I wouldn't even be preaching to you. You never know what I would be doing today. But by the grace of God, I'm standing before you. Maybe I would be the one, you know, stopping people somewhere. I'm telling you, it's the grace of God. And, And let me never think it is because you loved him. No, no, no. He loved you. Never think it is you who chose him. No, he picked you. He selected you. There is a song. I don't know that's in English. You know, I, I was raised in Western Uganda, so most of the songs, even the hymns, they first come in that language. But there's a song we used to sing and says, Mukama Kantorana. In other words, God picked me when I didn't have anything good in, him, in me. God picked me. God picked me. God picked me. Someone said, God picked me. It's not that I, you know, there are people who are out there crying in their sin. They are preached to, but their ears are closed. Their eyes are blinded. They cannot know Jesus. But by the grace of God, we have known God. By the grace of God, we have come to the knowledge of Christ. I, I tell you, friends, never take this grace for granted. Never. Never take this grace for granted. You could have been in the gutters right now drunk. You could have been out there in the, as an addict. You could have been out there as a prostitute. You could have been anything that any man does. It's not because you were brought up in a better family. Even being in a better family is the grace of God. <sighs> so 
say whatever. Someone say whatever. All those things that have been gains to me, I have now decided to consider them as loss that I may know him. Someone say, I want to know him. The next verse, I want to know him. I want to know Jesus every day of my life. I want, he says, now let's, let's, let's listen to this. I love this. Yes, furthermore, I count everything as loss compared to the possession of the priceless privilege, the overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth, the supreme advantage. Hey! Have you ever known how, how beautiful it is to know Jesus? I, I want to know him. Let me, let me shock you. There are people who are in church today who might end up in hell. And what will cause them to end up in hell? You know why? Because when they came to church, they discovered certain things they did not know before they got saved. They realized there's something called anointing. You know? There's something called an elder. A deacon, you know? <laughs> They realized, you know, hey, there are people who are called seers and prophets and, and general overseers and archbishop of the archbishops. <laughs> Listen, these titles are wonderful, but they can cause you to fail to see Jesus. Why? Because people are hating each other. I know a man of God that was poisoned by pastors. I, I can't mention names because I, you would all know who he is. He's a man of God in this nation, serving God with all his heart. He was going after the vision God had given him. And one day he comes to this city and he gets poisoned by other servants of God. Because they are jealous. Why? Because of his ministry. It's growing bigger. He's becoming better. Oh God, have mercy. Bitterness and envy and gossip and slander and strife and divisions and people breaking up other churches and, and, and trying to get. Just because of things you didn't even know when you're out there in the world, when you're a sinner. Now you come to church just because you've heard of anointing and grace and all this. And now you're fighting for positions. And that's why the enemy, the enemy begins to look at us and says, these people, they do not know. Someone say, I want to know Jesus. How I pray impact church that we will never get caught up in all these things. All these things, uh, you, know, you know, competitions and, and jealousies and envies and who sings better and who is more anointed and who has this position. May we always be about Jesus. I determine to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was Paul. He says, I determined. As long as you walk around church, you're going to get offended because there are people who are in church looking for those things. There are people who look at you and they see you as the one stopping them from being that elder. <laughs> being that man of God. Yeah. The man of God. God have mercy. <sighs> there are people, I mean, I know somebody that, I, you know, he's a bishop and I forgot, I called him brother. Eh? He says, what would you mean a bishop doctor, Buana? <laughs> you don't just call me brother. I passed that level of brother long ago. I'm telling you, I give you permission. Even if you just call me my name, I just want Jesus. As long as I can see where Jesus is, that's where I want to be. It's not about titles. Heaven has no titles. Heaven has no denomination. Heaven has nothing. It's only those who love Jesus. Someone say, who is this? Who is this? 
If people could stay around Jerusalem for three years with the actual Jesus in physical form and they never knew him, it is possible to stay around church for years and you have never really known who Jesus is. He says, I want to, the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, and of progressively, someone say it is progressive. You grow from knowledge to knowledge. When you think you know him, you realize you don't. You want to know him more. When you think you have, you have had an experience with him, you begin to realize you even want to know him more and more and more. If Paul could say this, how about me? I mean, this guy had seen miracles. This guy had seen every miracle you can imagine. He had seen the blind op eyes open. He had raised the dead. He had, he had done every kind until even the handkerchief. Talk about grace. His handkerchiefs. People would just come and put handkerchiefs on him. And they would take them and, and people would, 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 would get healed. But this man at the end of his life, he says, all these things. Everything. I count it as lost that I may progressively become more deeply. Ooh, hallelujah. This year we're talking about agreeing with the Holy Spirit, being acquainted with the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we, we were talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about Jesus. They're just the same. We're saying, God, we just want to know more and more and more. Your song we used to say, I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you more. Listen, he says, I want to become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. <laughs> of perceiving and recognizing and understanding him more fully and clearly. For his sake, listen to this. This is a man who is saying, because of Jesus. What have you lost because of Jesus? What are you willing to lose because of Jesus? This man says, for his sake, I have lost everything. I have lost what? Everything. Some of you are so angry because someone abused you because you're a believer. And you become so angry. This man says, it doesn't matter. I, as long as I have Jesus. He says, I have lost everything. And consider it all to be mere what? Rubbish. Someone say rubbish. Other versions even use some other words that I wouldn't want to say here. Refuse and dregs in order that I may win Christ. Gain Christ. Someone say who is this? Look at your neighbor. Tell them who is this man? Do you know this man? He is not just the miracle worker. He is God. Hallelujah. When we seek, many of us have sought the miracles instead of seeking him. We have sought his hand instead of seeking his face. We have not understood the greatness of his majesty. Remember, just continue on, verse 9. I have lost everything. What are you willing to lose? What are you willing to let go of? What are you willing to surrender? What are you willing to... You know, it might cost you. Let me tell you, this work of salvation, it might cost you even a job. But when God allows something to go, it's because he has something better for you. Your stand for Christ might cost you your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your fiancé. Thank you, sister. <laughs> it can cost you, I mean, it has cost people things. But there are those who have said, uh-uh, at this point, ah, uh, let me just... He will, Jesus will also understand. What are you willing to allow to lose that you may gain him? It's a narrow way. 
It's a narrow way. And, and, and I'm really, today I feel like this is the gospel. Amen? The gospel is not just saying, you know, everything is going to be good. Oh, how I wish that everything would be good for you. And I pray that everything would be good for you. That's my prayer for you. But I also want you to remember, it's a narrow way. And there are some times when you may have to drop off some things that you may stay on the narrow path. There might be times when that walk with Christ will cost you your friends. But are you ready to let go? Paul says, I am ready to lose everything. In fact, he says, I have lost it. And I consider it as rubbish. That I may crave Christ. That I may actually be found and known as in him. Not having my own self-achieved righteousness. That's what I was talking about, being self-righteous. Think, oh, you know the, you know the Pharisee? would have been a very powerful person in the church today. It's like, I give my tithes twice a week. Not even 10%. Me, I give 20. <laughs> I pray, I fast. But you know what the Bible says? He, the Bible says he, he prayed to himself. That means his prayer didn't even go beyond the ceiling. God was just looking at him. Look at this self-righteous man. And the other man ran to the corner and says, Oh God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I mean, I'm, if God would open the spirit world to us, <laughs> I mean, it would just be comedy. We would laugh. I mean, you could find maybe somebody who is here praying. And, I'm not saying anybody that you know. But <laughs> and speaking in tongues and what? But when, the, when, when heaven is looking at them, they just see where they slept. They're like, eh. God have mercy. Not having my own self, righteousness, based on the law's demands, I'll just speak a few words, but possessing that genuine righteousness that comes from the faith in Christ, which comes from God by faith. V lastly, verse 10. Someone say, I want to know him. Who is this man? Who is this man? That everybody will lay their clothes for. That everybody will worship. The man that nobody can stop. The man that is able to do miracles. The man that heals cancer. The man that heals HIV AIDS. The man that, that, that raises the dead. I mean, I keep challenging people. If Jesus can raise the dead, how about cancer? How about HIV AIDS? I mean, how about, you know, your, one of your organs is, 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 has failed, but Jesus is able to raise someone whose all organs have failed. So next time you're praying for somebody, remember that. That if, if Jesus raises the dead and speaks life and causes the heart which stopped and every, the brain has already, and they all receive life. How about just fixing one organ? Or fixing your blood sugar? Or bringing down your pressure? Ah. That's the man Jesus. I say it is the man Jesus. He's the man Jesus. The man Jesus. He says, for my determined purpose is that I may know him. That I may progressively become more deeply, intimately acquainted with him. And, and we continue on that I may know the wonders of his person more strongly. That I may come to know the power overflowing from his resurrection. That I may share in his sufferings and be transformed in his death. This is a man who has gone beyond just being excited. He's a man who is like, as long as I live, I like the song he says, Paul says, in fact, in the book of Philippians, when he was about to die, he says, for me to live is what? Is Christ. And to die is? As long as I live, it's about Jesus. Shedra, help me play, play that keyboard. Just play something. For me to live is Christ. <sighs> For me to live is Christ. There's a song I said a Nigerian lady sang. And it says like this. Just play. Something more than God. I've got something more than God. Something more than God. I've got something more than God. 
If all I have is Jesus, think more than God. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than God. More than God, more than God. I've got something more than God. Jesus is more than God. Let's rise up. Something more than God. I've got something more than God. Something more than God. I've got something more than God. Love is Jesus. I tell it to the world. Jesus is more Something more than God Something more than God I've got something more than God Something more than God I've got something more Something more than God I tell it to the world Jesus is more Something more than gold Something more than gold I've got something more than gold Something more than gold I've got something If all I've got is Jesus I've got something more than God I tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold, 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 more gold, Sign a contract with Jesus many, many years ago. And if you sign a contract with Jesus, He will never let you down. If you sign a contract with Jesus, He will never let you down. I sign a contract with Jesus many, many years ago. Sign a contract with Jesus many, many years ago. If you sign a contract with Jesus, He will never let you down. If you sign a contract with Jesus, He will never let you down. Then the other part says, He'll make it all right. All right, Jesus is gonna make everything all right. You make it all right. All right, Jesus is gonna make everything all right. He'll make it all. Jesus is gonna make everything alright. Just raise your hands to Jesus. Somebody walked into this place worried, anxious about their future, about what is gonna happen in their lives. All you need is Jesus. If all you've got is Jesus, you've got more than God. Someone just talk to him. Say, I want to know you, Jesus. Mm, oh, Jesus is going to make everything alright. He'll make it alright. Alright. Jesus is going to make Oh, 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 oh,
zaidi Bwana nikufahamu zaidi Bwana nikujue zaidi Bwana nikufahamu zaidi Yesu nikujue Bwana nikufahamu nikufahamu zaidi Bwana nikujue nikujue zaidi Bwana raise your hands, talk to him. We'll be done in a few minutes, but I want you to just take this minutes, think about these things. What have you been counting as gain? What has stood in the way of you knowing him? to be Masiji of Masiji of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because it's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. And I was remembering this uh, chorus we used to sing. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you.
Father God, we thank you. We give you praise, Lord. It's all about you, Jehovah God. It's all about you in this place. It's all about you in our lives. It's all about you, Jehovah God, in our nation. It's all about you, King of Glory. We are here because of you, O oh God. You are our everything, Jehovah God. Without you, we are lost. Without you, we are desperate. Without you, we are nothing, Jehovah. It's all about you, King Almighty. We thank you, Jehovah God, this uh, afternoon. Thank you for the man of God. Thank you for the powerful word. Thank you for reminding us that it is all about you, Jehovah God. May you be all about us this week, from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and until we get back to this place, Jehovah God. It will all about you, O God, in all our workplaces, in all that we do, Jehovah God. It is all about you, Jehovah Father, for your name is above all other names. Your name is powerful. Who is like you, Jehovah? None to compare unto you, Jehovah God. We need more of you, Jehovah King Almighty. We need you, you, oh God, in our lives, Jehovah God. We give you praise. May you receive all the glory. May you receive all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We've come to the end of uh, the service. We had had a good time. I'm feeling much better. I was feeling so down <laughs> this morning. But I'm feeling far, far much better. May the Lord receive all the glory and honor. Uh, we want to remind us uh, of our weekly services that we have our morning glory, starting from 6 to 7.45, our lunch hours, uh, Monday to Friday, from 12.45 to around 2.00. Yes, and you are welcome for those who work in Westlands. And if you don't work in Westland and you have the chance, you can always come and visit. Uh, after this, we'll be having a youth. You, you are really challenging us, you youth people. <laughs> You're having a meeting after this, so you are asked to remain behind for a meeting. Yeah, I don't know. I think as women of this place, we are challenged here. I was just about to ask women to, to, be, to remain behind, but there's no meeting. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I think uh, that's it. And now we can finish with the word of the grace. And now the grace for Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.